This video help is going to be covering the tabbed portals at the bottom of the screen in the Equipments Inventory and Services. Before we get started though, I want to point out a few things. For example, there is a menu options at the top of the screen that were, are used in the cloud. And I'm just going to cover them quite quickly so you'll see what they are. You can import a file in the screen that you're working in. If you are importing into the record fields above the portals and the tabs, it will import it into this screen. The only way you can import into the portal records, which are shown below, is to be in the individual record for that. You can click this screen here or use the drop down to go to that particular uh, individual record, and then you can add or edit or either import or export data out of those single record screens. So a single record screen would be the data at the top of here. So if you go to export data, you're going to see the fields listed here that are a part of the export and import from a file would be from a file that you're bringing in from a, say for example, Excel or a CSV file to bring them into the records. I recommend Excel. It's probably the best way to do it. And then there's a save as record situation, which is a snapshot. This is not going to work uh, because what this does is it takes a snapshot of a FileMaker file for a FileMaker user to be able to use the link, so to speak. And then there's a link to the database, which is sending a link, a raw link to somebody who owns FileMaker. You don't need to do that. Uh, the clear edit, this is not used. The view probably in this one is you do not want to change these, but this is all of the different screen, uh, screens that you can navigate to in the application. Insert is not used. Records, very be very cautious what you do here. I recommend if you're going to try to use any of this information at the top that you contact me at support using the icon on the screen and then I will walk you through how to use these. You can do a new record, but the new record is already on the screen. And when you duplicate, you have to be very careful what you're doing, depending on the screen you're in when you're duplicating records. And deleting a record, you already have a delete button on the screen, but it, the only time you ever delete a record is if it's never been used as an inventory item or in a work order. If it has been used, do not delete that record. You will orphan all the attached uh, fields in different screens that were related to that inventory item. Deleting all records, very dangerous. Don't use this unless you know what you're doing. If you're clearing out an entire, entire database, it can be used, but you have to do it the proper way in order to not cause problems in the application. Go to record allows you to go to, and we have the buttons over there on the right hand side, go to next and previous. So this is not really required. The omitted records are usually used in a report or in a list view where you want to omit one record or more than one by a multiple. And omitting one record is pulling one record out. So in a find where say like you did a selection of several records, but you wanted to omit some more, you could omit one at a time using this menu option on the cloud. Uh, modify last is part of a find. The find buttons are here and you can go ahead and use them, start and perform find. Sorting, the only reason I don't like people to use a sort is that it will not uh, return to the correct sort if you do it incorrectly. And unsort is not a good way to do it. If you're sorting in a list view, you can do that, but I've already included buttons where it's appropriate to have those sorts. So I don't recommend you use this. Okay, let's talk about this part of the application. The equipment planning is something that is done where I'm just not going to change anything. I'm just going to walk through the fields. If you add a, an equipment serial number from one that is or and or a, this is by the serial and the product ID. In this case, the K86 is the one that you see up at the top, the RO79. That would be what is used. Uh, but what you do is as you add serial numbers, there will be a number of the same K86 9079s with different serial numbers. So make sure you're picking the appropriate serial number for the item that you're actually planning to do service on. You can have multiple records in the planner for different things that are serial number itemed items, if you understand what I'm saying. So you can create a work plan for all the different serial numbered items for the item that 
for the screen and inventory that you're currently looking at. So obviously you're planning and scheduling based on the actual item in this screen. So the next thing you're gonna do in this case, you can see one that's actually in there. Uh, this is for 318 uh, where one was created on a different screen. Now what you would do is you would put in the uh, service task and in this case, the service task could be something that is part of a uh, work order as far as the task is concerned. You can put in the tech that's going to actually be doing the work. And how do you create text? You use the link here, which is a uh, list editor that allows you to add text and their hourly rate in that particular screen. The next thing is the service date. The service date is the date that the service is actually going to be done and where you're actually going to perform the service and the service hours that it took times the actual item will give you what the labor cost is in actual labor cost. Uh, you can then put the service uh, that you covered, what you did, performed an inspection or whatever you did, and that would be added in here to this record. There is a portal record where you can do searches within the portal record if you want to look up certain services for one or all of the items in the entire application. Let's go back here for a second. The service, interval, the service interval is the amount of time between service checks. For example, 30, 60, 90 days. You would put the 90 days in there. Then you would put the from date. The from date is the actual date when it started uh, the actual service at the count. So if it's 90 days and you want the 90 days to start on the 26th, you would put that in there. And then what it'll do is it'll calculate the next date that the service will be uh, supposed to be performed. And then the service types are the service types like repair and so forth and unscheduled and scheduled maintenance. You can edit that again by adding whatever you need to in the service type uh, list where you can edit it. And in this case, you're in the plan, you're planning the type of maintenance that's done, not so much like you did in the actual work order. When you create this line and you go to this screen, you're going to see where it's going to add the actual date along with the invoice, uh, the in, the item that you put in here. So uh, you want to go ahead and make sure that you get the dates and everything correct over here as far as the next service date. You create normally this record on the date that you're actually doing the service, which would be the 318 that we planned on the other screen. There is also a tab in here where you can do the service materials that were actually being added in this screen. And what this is, you pick the service kind of equipment like we did at the top again, then this date for the service that when you did it, then you would add in the, uh, the kind of uh, used items on the service. A product description would be the product that you are actually adding, the quantity that you used, the cost each, and then the material description. And what this is going to do is it's going to give you a running calculation of the cost in a material screen uh, that's going to be a report that's going to bring up all those items. And then there's a, once again, there's a uh, portal record here that you can go to and do searches in the individual items. Okay, for that's for the service materials that were used in consumption as you do an actual task that are not part of the actual inventory that you're using. So these are items that are consumables, that you're going to use in the process of doing the work. Now, it's your option to use this screen and not, or not if you want to. Let's look at the invoice history screen. The invoice history screen is the screen that will show if you have done service on a item or done an invoice, the invoice data will be shown in this screen. Let's pop through a couple records and see if we can come up one that actually has something in there. Let's go. There's one right there. So here's one that was done on the date of March the 20th of 214. We use the drop down list in the invoice to add this information in here. You do not do it from here. This is just where you can read and check stuff to make sure it's done properly. You have the equipment will drop in the item within the invoice and put it right over here. The cost each is the cost that you're actually using. If there's a standard price that you're using, there will be a standard price that will appear on the invoice and you would go ahead and put that in there. When you do that, it will automatically calculate based on that standard price. So it's important to have a standard price in anything that you're going to be selling on retail. And that needs to be added in the inventory record. 
the quantity that you used. The standard price will, when you click it up here and put it in here, it'll automatically drop it in here and also on the invoice when you want to use it on the invoice. If there was a reason where you needed to use a discount, well, it would be on the invoice and here where it would show up. And then the subtotal would be calculated based on the quantity and cost that you're selling the item for. If you tax the item, you would put in it, there's a, dr a drop down list that you can edit where you can put in the tax rate that's appropriate for what you're selling. And it'll calculate the actual tax. And then the line total will be calculated. And then there's a notes field here that has certain different things that how the actual item was uh, sold. And this is actually done on the invoice screen. Now, the main reason that we're doing this or having this in here is as you invoice stuff, it'll give you account and amount and it'll summarize the actual items for this particular item in this screen. Since these are only entered on the invoice and then they're only shown for the item that was on the invoice line item for the record in inventory. Now, this will not reduce the inventory count when you put the quantity in here. The only place that that is done is in the uh, work order form, which is a part of when you invoice, it'll uh, show it. Now, you can do a work order and take the items out of, uh, out of the uh, stock inventory, but you don't have to do an invoice if your business does not do invoices. If you do do invoices, it's a great way to track all the hardware as far as where it's going and software and services. Okay, the next thing we're going to do is look at the purchase history. This is very similar to the thing we just did on the last screen, where in the purchase order, which you can go to over here, you can see all the items that were purchased that came to this screen. Now, in this case, it shows the date the item was actually ordered on the purchase order, the quantity that was ordered, if the standard price was entered in this particular record, that would show up here. And this can be edited from either location. Uh, the cost in this case is a bogus record. We just put $100 in there. Uh, we did a subtotal of $100 based on the quantity. One times 100 is 100. If you pay for shipping as a part of the line item, you can put the shipping in for the line item and it'll add that to the summary of the line item for the cost. And then if you receive the items, once they're receiving, you can either do it on the purchase order screen or you can come over here and do it here for the item. I suggest doing it in the purchase order because each line of item that you're picking in on the receivable invoice is where you want to actually add stuff. The balance due, if there, for example, if there were six on order and you receive five, there would be a balance due of one when you receive the purchase order. I could pop over to the purchase order real quick to show you that, but I'll cover that separately. One of the things I want to point out on this video is some of this stuff looks a little odd on the cloud server and it would be cleaned up and uh, taken care of uh, so that it won't show the same. This is the initial uh, way it looks. The last thing we got in here is the work order history. Same as I talked about before, uh, it's pretty much like the purchase, only when you do a work order, there's a work order number created, and this is not enterable. You cannot click and enter in here. But if you were looking at the actual work order and there was some error in it, you could edit it in respect to the items in here on the work order. Do not try to do it in this screen. This is like the invoices where it just takes the retained information from the invoice. And in this case, it's doing it from the work order and displaying it in the inventory so you can see the history of where this was used or and or invoiced in the invoice history and also the purchase history where it was actually purchased and when it was purchased. It'll summarize that information as you do the information here. So for example, if there was a quantity of one in here and I put in one, it's gonna show the work order sum quantity was one. The serial number is created in this stock serial number listing. So if it affects the item as to the one that is actually being the actual current a serial number and say for example you're going to trade this out on the work order well within the work order if you have listed the serial numbers in the stock serials it will be on this list to replace it so for, say for example this was a serialized item the micron filter had a serial number on it you could see it in this particular screen here where all the items were listed clicking out of this will hide this and what you're going to do when you hide that is you're going to go ahead and look down here 
to see if there is another serial number that you're going to replace it from. Now, obviously, this one is the K07007 one. So what we'd want to do is we'd want to look for the K007 uh, stock item, which is this one right here. Now, if you had multiple Im Im uh, items in there with different uh, serial numbers on them, you'd pick the appropriate one to replace the one that's in there now. So for example, if this is 133 something, and I had another one in inventory that I'm actually holding in my hand, and I know the serial number of it, within the work order, I would do the drop down there to replace, show the new serial number that's in there. This is a installed status field, and it's done within the work order, where as you change the status in the work order, it'll update here, and the same thing on the service pending or status there, it will automatically change it within the work order. Let's pop over and look at that so you can see what I'm actually talking about. Let's go into the work order where it actually has some information in it. And in the work order, you're going to see all the information we were just talking about. Uh, it'll have the line item, the quantity, the part ID, the serial number with the drop down, and the replacement serial number in this area. And then the status of installed or and or when you drop this one down it'll show you this information here now on the cloud right now this particular uh, work order is kind of shrouded with the wrong colors and it will be updated so it'll look it'll have a white background and black text on it so if you have any questions on that i'll be covering this separately in another video so let's go back to the equipment back to equipment you can see where we were at you can see the on hand quantity, the amount uh, on order is uh, none, but we've received one, so there's none on order. So that the, covers the rest of the information in this particular video. Thank you. If you need any assistance with a walkthrough, contact me for a walkthrough. Thank you.